November 17, 1993, Chief Honest Shonikon, head of the then interim national government, resigned his appointment as head of state and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces. I have an unshaken faith in the promise of Nigeria, and I believe that the best is yet to come. However, fellow colleagues, I regret to inform you that in the light of recent events and after due consideration of all the facts i am left with no alternative but to take the most honorable and dignified step of resigning with immediate effect my appointment as head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of nigeria following the resignation of chief honest shonikon the mantle of leadership fell on the then Secretary of Defense and most senior cabinet member, General Sani Abacha. Many have expressed fears about the apparent return of the military. Many have talked about the concern of the international community. However, under the present circumstances, the survival of our beloved country is far above any other consideration. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must therefore solve our problems ourselves. General Abacha became head of state in a period of national crisis. The annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election by the Babangida administration precipitated the crisis. By November of that year, when General Sani Abacha took over, the national economy was on the verge of collapse because of strike action by organized labor in some key economic sectors, most prominently the oil sector. There was also a serious threat to national unity as Nigerians were beginning to feel unsafe in parts of the country other than where they originate from. It was in this connection that the Abacha administration was described as a child of necessity. General Abacha saw it that way and he took appropriate actions to restore law and order and reverse the downward trend of the economy. This government is a child of necessity with a strong determination to restore peace and stability to our country and on these foundations and throne a lasting and true democracy. The past becomes an albatross only if we fail to learn from it and heed its lessons. It is now time to seek a sober understanding of what went wrong. We must now resume our search for unity and prosperity, firmly anchored on peace and justice. We must collectively recommence the task of rebuilding our polity and restructuring our economy. Mindful of Nigerians' desire for democracy, General Abacha promised a national constitutional conference where a new national cause will be charted by Nigerians through their representatives and the representatives of vital interest groups. A constitutional conference with full constitutional powers will be established soon to determine the future constitutional structure of Nigeria. The constitutional conference will also recommend the method of forming parties which will lead to the ultimate recognition of political parties formed by the people. He inaugurated the 363-member National Constitutional Conference on June 27, 1994. You have the mandate to deliberate upon the structure of the Nigerian nation-state and to work out the modalities for ensuring good governance, to devise for our people a system of government guaranteeing equal opportunity, the right to aspire to any public office irrespective of state of origin, ethnicity or creed, and thus engender a sense of belonging in all our citizens. After a year of deliberations, arguments and consensus, a draft constitution emerged. 
The conference also recommended the creation of additional states and a butcher obliged by creating six states, one each from the now recognized zonal structure. The principle adopted for the creation of states and local governments was to ensure a fair spread and balancing within the geopolitical zones of the country, applying such criteria as population and land mass, among others. General Abacha's transition process saw the registration of five political parties and the holding of local government elections and the national and state assemblies. General Abacha's economic agenda was to totally transform the economy by opening up liberalization and diversification. This became necessary because he took over an economy that was in crisis and needed drastic measures to save it. The economy which this administration inherited was one characterized by great debilities and great instabilities. On virtually all the indices, the outlook was rather sobering. Economic output was measured by gross national product has been on a steady decline in the past few years. Owing to the sluggish growth, employment has stagnated while the phenomenal growth in money supply fueled by expansionary physical policies have filed pressure on the real sector. Interbank and lending rates have risen to unprecedented levels resulting in declines in investment and production. All these have been worsened by the collapse in the value of the Naira, the attendant rapid increase of service charges on external debts, and the worsening balance of payment profile. In short, it can be said that inadequate physical discipline complicated the already high incidence of budget deficits, which in turn made efforts at economic reforms more difficult to handle and led to a worsening of social conditions. He promised fiscal discipline on the part of government, a promise he kept throughout his years in office. At the end of December 1993, inflation was 100%, but by the end of 1997, it had been brought down to less than 10%. Exchange rate also stabilized during the Abache years, thereby making it possible for the private sector especially to plan and budget without fears of an unstable exchange rate. He also halted the annual increase of Nigeria's foreign debt. Throughout the Abati years, Nigeria did not take any loan from abroad. The country's foreign debt was about 33 billion naira in 1995, and by December 1997, it was brought to 27.1 billion naira. The foreign reserve also increased to 7.7 .7 billion naira from 1.1 billion naira during the Abache years. Deficit budget has now become a thing of the past. Abache saw the banking sector as crucial to the nation's economic recovery and development. But the sector is in distress. Several banks were going under due to unprofessional and corrupt conduct of some bankers and their collaborators. Abacha was determined to reverse the situation and restore confidence in the sector. The failed bank's decree emerged and tribunals followed to try those that have dragged identified banks to the state of distress. Many bank chief executives and customers were arrested. Many have been convicted and sanity, professionalism and confidence have been restored to the banking sector. Diversification of the economy also recorded progress with a 53% increase in non-oil revenue between 1996 and 1997 alone. The solid mineral sector is now set for a glorious future. The Escravos gas plant, the first major move towards taking gas flaring, is now in place. The new aluminium smelting plant, the LMA Petrochemical Company, and the gas and oil processing plant have all been completed in the Apache years and will continue to be sources of additional revenue to government. 
The liberalized economy and the additional incentives granted to foreign investors in Nigeria attracted investments that by 1997 were rated the highest in Africa. In the telecommunications industry, the Abacha government granted licenses to private concerns to provide telephony services around the country. We have in the last four years approved the provision of telecommunication facilities in many locations across the country in pursuit of excellence in this very important sector of our economy. Although we still have some way to go in meeting the total telecommunication needs of the nation, a lot of ground has been covered by Nigerian telecommunications in the last few years. It is a realization of the increasing need for private sector participation in the industry that will commence access to aid private participation in the provision of telecommunication services. Today, at least two private operators have commenced services to the public. Two private satellite broadcasting stations began operations during the Abache years, in addition to many private television stations in many states. Abacha also had a vision for Nigeria, a vision of economic prosperity, political stability, and social harmony. A Nigeria that by the year 2010 will be largely developed in all sense. Now that we have attained a modest level of stability, we are faced with the greater challenge of how to consolidate the gains we have recorded. We have to concretize our achievements and determine objectives for our country in the short, medium, and long term. In this regard, I am proud to state that Nigeria is now ready to adopt a more systematic and carefully phased out approach to the development of the nation. Time is indeed right for us to have a definite vision of the type of society we want, especially one that is economically prosperous, politically stable, and socially harmonious. Properly defined, this vision should provide a strategic insight into the direction in which the nation needs to move as well as a proper focus on the formation of programs and policies which should lead us to the realization of the future of our dream. On November 27, 1996, Abate inaugurated the Vision 2010 Committee made up of distinguished and eminent patriots charged with the responsibility of fashioning out a proper bearing for the country's economic, political, social, and cultural progress. Set appropriate goals and time frame for achieving them. Vision 2010 Committee carried out its assignment as its recommendations have now formed part of national development objective. This is the main report which I want to present to you for and on behalf of the nation. Because we all work in the desert for the nation. And we're doing this for the nation as well. Once again, I thank you very much for the great opportunity which you've given each and every one of us to be able to do this. It's a contribution to the development of our great country. Thank you very much indeed. Petroleum Special Trust Fund, PTF, is an intervention fund where money realized from the increased pump price of petroleum products is channeled to restoration of the country's dilapidated infrastructure, repair and equipping of schools and other educational institutions, health institutions, roads and more. Firstly, we have the take-off project. These are projects that are manifestly clear. 
everybody in Nigeria knows the roads are in terrible condition. And it's not only costing lives, it's costing property. And so much inefficiency, evacuation of farm products, evacuation of industrial goods. You get so much of overhead charging because uh, the roads are so terrible. So we got the roads. Health is the same thing. For the last 15 years, the health sector has been declining terribly. Education, water, these things are so visible and are so clear that uh, uh, you don't need uh, really a very big uh, outfit or what to tell you. Everybody can feel it. I think health is the reaction when people want to start to see the results. Um, so what we do, once it is identified, and mainly the road will take them from north to south, east towards the main road, uh, that carry the farm products, the industrial goods, and finish, uh, and raw material, and so on. And that's very clear. The state were asked to send uh, two primary schools for local government that are to be rehabilitated. One secondary school for uh, senatorial district, and one maybe technical college, higher uh, education college, polytechnic for state, and then all the federal government colleges, and the universities. So we are going into them to pick priorities. Mainly it's going to be uh, a renovation, then equipping and re-equipping, you know, of laboratories, uh, equipping workshops, and then libraries. This is what we are going to do, and it's going to be so comprehensive. The impact of the PTF is beginning to be felt. Abacha believed in the philosophy that Africans are their brother's keepers. He believed that events in one country affect its neighbors because of historical ties, shared values, and most importantly, common African heritage. Nigeria, therefore, could not be impervious to strifes and conflict in countries in the sub-region. It was with this in mind that Nigeria, during the Abati years, intervened in Sierra Leone, under the auspices of ECOMOC to restore democracy there following a military coup and reinstate the legitimate civilian government there. The mission was accomplished and President Tijen Kaba was reinstated. <laughs> Liberian crisis dragged on for eight years until it was resolved through the efforts of Abacha and an elected civilian government was inaugurated under the presidency of Mr. Charles Taylor. I, Charles Gake Taylor, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will, that I will support, support, uphold, uphold protect, and defend, and defend the Constitution, the Constitution and, laws of the Republic of Liberia. and laws of the Republic of Liberia. There were two momentous journeys that I undertook for peace. And that courage was developed by the personal commitment of President Abacha. Come, there will be no harm. The second trip was my long drive from Ghana to Monrovia. For ECOMOG to provide security for me. A gift 
again, it took the personal commitment to in two conversations with President Abacha that he personally took responsibility for my security incoming. That is why we have peace today. So President Abacha gets the time for it. Relations between the Abacha government and those of Western countries were frosty during the period of his administration. Abacha did not trust Western solutions to African and indeed Nigerian problems and he never accepted them. He said on several occasions that Nigerians have the capacity to solve their problems themselves. Abacha's distrust for the West is not unconnected with Africa's colonial legacy. Nigeria, like most developing countries the world over, has suffered from a long history of exploitation and oppression. That is why today descendants of our people are to be found dispersed in far off places such as Brazil, Chile, Cuba, North America and the Caribbean. Most of these people went there not by free choice but by force of circumstances. They were victims of one of the most cruel forms of exploitation the world has ever known, slavery. For two centuries, the trade in slaves and the practice of slavery drained our continent, Africa, of its natural and human resources. Our continent was called the Dark Continent. Colonialism was also a manifestation and an extension of the evil of slavery, perhaps even on a much larger scale. Nigeria and most of Africa were colonized and subjugated for a period of not less than 100 years. The system imposed by colonialism not only further depleted our resources, but also left our countries and our people with daunting challenges of economic, political, and social nature. With the end of colonial rule, Nigeria, like most other former colonial territories, began to pick up the pieces and rectify the harm and devastation done to our societies and our peoples by centuries of foreign exploitation and oppression. Consequently, Nigeria's territorial integrity and sovereignty were not to be compromised, especially to the West. While the Western countries tried to isolate Abacha and his government, African leaders, especially in Equos, embraced him. He was made chairman of the regional body in two successive years in recognition of his contributions to the sub-region. He also played host to several leaders from Africa and beyond and received several emissaries from foreign leaders. Most prominent of those leaders received by Abacha was the Catholic pontiff, Pope John Paul II. All Nigerians must be made to feel proud of their nation. nation. All must play a part in constructing the future. This is my prayer to Almighty God for you. God bless Nigeria and all Nigerians. God sustain all the peoples of Africa. In his younger days, Abacho was a keen sportsman. This was reflected in his administration support for sports development in Nigeria. Consequently, Nigeria made her greatest achievements in sports during the Abacha years. In 1994, he personally spoke to Nigeria's Super Eagles shortly before they played the finals of that year's African Nations Cup. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Hey, my name is Trinity George. Yes. George, you have been doing very well. Uh, 
Thank you, sir. The result was the African Nations Cup, won for the first time in 14 years. He also spoke with the Olympics Dream Team in 1996, shortly before they played the Olympics football final. The Dream Team conquered their opponents and won the Olympic football gold, the first by any African team. Nigeria also won three other Olympic medals, including a gold in long term, making it Nigeria's greatest moment in sports. In recognition of Abacha's support for sports development in Nigeria and Africa, the Supreme Council for Sports in Africa honored him with its meritorious award. On the 7th of June this year, the President of the Authority of the State of Palestine, Mr. Yasser Arafat, made a stopover visit to Nigeria and was received by Abacha. Three hours later, Arafat departed. Abacha returned home, and that was his last public outing. On Monday the 8th of June, the news of the death of General Sani Abacha got to Nigerians, and the nation was shocked. He was buried that night in Kano. <laughs> Oh,